Thank you all for uh, taking the time to listen again. Uh, Without further ado, I'm going to get right into the word. The powers of earth and hell arrayed themselves against Christ and the person of his followers. Christians were stripped of their possessions and driven from their homes. Great numbers sealed their testimony with their blood. These persecutions beginning under Nero, about the time of the martyrdom of Paul, continued with greater or less fury for centuries. Great numbers were thrown to wild beasts or burned alive in the amphitheaters. Some were crucified, others were covered with the skins of the wild animals and thrust into the arena to be torn by dogs. Their punishment was often made the chief entertainment at public fairs. Vast multitudes assembled to enjoy the sight and greeted their dying agonies with laughter and applause. Destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth, referenced in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 37 and 38. The followers of Christ must tread the same path of humiliation, reproach, and suffering which their master trod. Under the fiercest persecution, these witnesses for Jesus kept their faith unsullied. The loss of every earthly blessing could not force them to renounce their belief in Christ. Gotta stay solid. These these called to mind the 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 words of their master that when persecuted for Christ's sake, they were to be exceedingly glad for great would be their reward in heaven. For so the prophets had been persecuted before them, they rejoiced that they were accounted worthy to suffer for the truth and songs of triumph ascended from the midst of crackling flames. Looking upward by faith, they saw Christ regarding their steadfastness with approval. A voice came down to them from the throne of God. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, reverence. Referenced in Revelations chapter 2, verse 10. In vain were Satan's efforts to destroy the church of Christ by violence. God's workmen were slain, but the gospel continued to spread, and the number of its adherents to increase. Said a Christian, you may kill us, torture us, condemn us. The oftener we are mown, we are mown down by you. The more in number we grow, the blood of Christians is seed. Their living, their living example and dying testimony were a constant witness for the truth and were least expected. The subjects of Satan were leaving his service and enlisting under the banner of Christ. Satan therefore laid his plans to war more successfully against the government of God by planting his banner in the Christian church. Persecution ceased, and idolaters were led to receive a part of the Christian faith while they rejected the other essential truths. They professed to accept Jesus, but they had no conviction of sin and felt no need of repentance or of change of heart. With some concessions on their part, they proposed that Christians should should make concessions that all might unite on the platform of belief in Christ, so just on the belief alone. Now the church was in fearful peril. Prison, torture, fire, sword were blessings in comparison with this. Under a cloak of pretended Christianity, Satan was insinuating himself into the church, Most of the Christians at last consented to lower their standard. A union was formed between Christianity and paganism. As followers of Christ united with idolaters, the Christian religion became corrupted, and the church lost her purity and power. The Apostle Paul foretold this great apostasy. He declared that the day of Christ should not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. The conversion of the Roman emperor Constantine in the early part of the 4th century caused great rejoicing. And the world, cloaked with the form of righteousness, with the form of righteousness walked into the church. 
Paganism, while appearing to be vanquished, became the conqueror. Her spirit controlled the church, her doctrines, ceremonies, her superstitions were incorporated into the faith and worship of the professed followers of Christ. This compromise between paganism and Christianity resulted in the development of the man of sin, foretold in the prophecy as opposing and exalting himself above God. Satan exalted that he had succeeded in deceiving so so large a number of followers of Christ. He then brought his power to bear more fully upon these and inspired them to persecute those who remained true to God. In the 6th century, paganism had given place to the papacy, which, which had become firmly established. And now began the 1260 years of oppression foretold in the prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation. The beast revealed Christians were forced to choose either to yield their integrity and accept and accept the palpal ceremonies and worship or to wear away their lives in dungeons or suffer death by the rack, the flame or the head or the headsman's axe. Persecution opened upon upon the faithful with greater fury than ever before. The move of the Roman church to power marked the beginning of the Dark Ages. The gospel was withheld from the people. The gospel was withheld from the people from the people. It was regarded as a crime to own or read the scriptures. It was regarded as a crime to own or read the scriptures. They were almost unknown, not only to the people, but to the priests. God's law, the standard of righteousness, having been removed, they exercised power without limit and practiced vice without restraint. For centuries, Europe made no progress in learning, arts, or civilization. The noon of papacy was the midnight of the world. In lands beyond the jurisdiction of Rome, there existed for many centuries bodies of Christians who remained almost wholly free from papal corruption. For hundreds of years, the Church of Christ found, found refuge in seclusion and obscurity. Thus says the prophet, the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days referenced in revelations chapter 12 verse 6 of those who resisted the encroachments of the palpal power the wildernesses stood foremost behind the lofty bulwarks of the mountains the wildernesses found a hiding place there here amid the darkness of the middle ages the light of truth was kept burning for a thousand years the very existence of this the very existence of this people holding the faith of holding the faith of the ancient church was a constant testimony to rome's apostasy and therefore excited the most bitter hatred and persecution their refusal to surrender the scriptures was also an offense that rome could not tolerate she determined to blot them out from the earth referencing persecution and she determined to blot them from the earth. They were hunted to death, yet scattered over many lands. They planted seeds of the Reformation that began in the time of Wycliffe, grew broad and deep in the days of Luther, and is to be carried forward to the close of time. Thank you all for listening.